I'm Sophie Baker, the International News Editor at Pensions and Investments and the Director of Programming for the World Pension Summit. And I'm very pleased today to welcome John Carey, Head of Infrastructure Debt for Europe at Elgin. Delighted to be here, Sophie. Hi, John. Um, So today in the run up to the World Pension Summit taking place in The Hague from the 5th to the 7th of November, very soon, um, we are having a chat, an expert talk to learn more about Elgin, the role that you have, um, and also about the transition to a low carbon economy. So I've got a few questions for you um, that I wanted to ask you. Are you ready to get started? All, All good. Excellent. So Policymakers, investors, the general public are increasingly focused and hearing about this sort of transition to the low carbon economy. Um, But it might be useful to sort of start with what that is, um, how Elgin defines it, how we should be thinking about it and what the assets are that sort of are affected by this transition. No, exactly right. And uh, for us, it's really important to think about the transition in holistic terms. So Mm -hmm. we for sure recognize there is an important dimension which is linked to energy but we also uh, are very mindful that there are other aspects of infrastructure that need to be developed and modernized in Mm. order to indeed make that transition to a low carbon economy and society the way we think about it is really in two pillars so the first being decarbonization solutions so that as as the phrase suggests is really focused on where carbon is most pronounced in various aspects of the economy and society. Clearly, power is one important aspect, and we would recognise that Europe uh, has made a a good start in decarbonising the power value chain. Mm -hmm. But we also uh, recognise that there's a significant carbon still present in the transportation arena, And so we're very determined to uh, seek investments that uh, help electrify and reduce reliance on hydrocarbon fuels within transportation, both of civilians and also of freight. So uh, we we see a a really interesting dimension there on the freight side, Mm -hmm. on the transportation uh, uh, arena. But also uh, we include the built environment and... um, what what we mean by that is recognizing that delivering effective heat and cooling to buildings whether it be residential or commercial or public buildings is a really important aspect as well as uh, ensuring that those buildings are uh, energy efficient so that is another important strand of how we think about decarbonization The other final component of of that arena for us is the industrial side. So Mm -hmm. very meaningful carbon emissions in vital uh, material production, such as steel, cement and so on. And and we we certainly uh, are looking for investments that help tackle um, that particular process. And then the second theme is on the network resilience side. So we and i think the perfect example of this is in the electricity arena uh, well observed uh, trend at the moment or challenge i should say which is we can uh, create new renewable generation for example uh, quite well at the moment in europe but uh, connecting that to the grid and ultimately getting that low carbon power to where it needs to be is clearly a, a, a very significant challenge for the grid so Electricity networks is a key part of our uh, thematic. We certainly also recognize that there are grid investments to be made, but also technology-based investments to be made in terms of metering, allowing users to uh, really understand how they use energy and how they might uh, shift their, their patterns of usage over time. And then the other two elements of networks that are not so much carbon focused, but we think are vital to underpin all of the efforts that are being made in in terms of new infrastructure. And Mm -hmm. that is environmental networks. So most most, uh, prominently water and waste uh, and recycling, and then also digital. So the backbone, if you like, of uh, modern economy and modern societies uh, is increasingly reliant in our view on a uh, high speed 
reliable digital uh, network. So we, we capture all of the above in the way we think about transition. Um, and this sort of phrase of, that I keep hearing as well, sort of transition infrastructure, um, what is it that makes that an area of potential interest for pension funds, um, somewhere to sort of invest their capital? Because it's got to be important. It's got to be, you know, makes sense from that side too, hasn't it? So are there also sort of specific benefits to creating a private debt portfolio, for example, that's aligned towards that theme? Indeed. And we think of, of this in, in four ways. So the first uh, uh connecting to part of your question private debt mm -hmm. why private debt clearly public debt has a role to play but the reason private debt is so critical is for many of these assets their size uh, and their complexity to some degree need uh, uh to source capital from different pools and private debt and private equity for that matter are two vital ones before these businesses are of size and scale to access the public markets, mm -hmm. then in our view, they need to access the private markets um, where you can uh, put borrowers and sponsors together with debt providers and debt investors to come up with more of a bespoke solution for the, the given situation. And that, clearly that's a lot more challenging to do in the public markets. So that private debt aspect is important uh, and it and uh, linked to that or an extension of that, we would also observe it's an opportunity for pension capital to access different risk and different exposure that's not so readily available in other markets. And I think that's the second mm -hmm. piece. So this is a diversification opportunity in terms of how pension uh, allocators build their portfolio, think about their asset allocation. It's a, a, a comparatively new uh, arena in terms of risk and exposure that they can bring into the portfolio. So that's that's the second piece. The final pair uh, is is actually principles that, that need to uh, underpin any effective allocation, and that is, is the financial return and the non-financial return uh, interesting and attractive? Uh, mm -hmm. And in, in this arena, our view is that both offer something different. I mentioned it earlier that a lot of this infrastructure is new and developing. Mm -hmm. And whilst we will always be uh, very selective in the risks that we take, we certainly observe new opportunities in higher risk areas of the, of the spectrum, if you like, that uh, carry with that uh, the opportunity to earn higher returns that might therefore be interest, uh, interesting for for pension schemes and pension allocators. So that is, a, I think, a, a new phenomenon, relatively speaking, in the infrastructure world for debt, mm -hmm. whereby there is a, a higher yielding uh, opportunity to, to, to tap into. Now, clearly, uh, the important elements of, of infrastructure debt in terms of their resilient characteristics remain at the centre of our focus. Um, and, and that gives a, a more resilient performance through time. But it is true to say there are high returning opportunities available in the transition. Mm -hmm. And then finally, to elaborate on the non-financial return aspect, this is really about driving change through investment. So whether it's sitting explicitly within an impact strategy or in a broader aligned uh, strategy, at the heart of this is an infrastructure asset or series of assets that is um, vital in driving change and delivering that transition to a low carbon society that we mentioned earlier. And I think one of the interesting developments in recent times is the ability to capture this and to measure and monitor it over time, which still I would observe has um, more work to be done, but we've made right. a good start in capturing that data and now starting to be able to present it and report it to uh, pension scheme investors so you can uh, establish what your financial return is, but also what impact uh, and uh, broader change has been uh, achieved via the, uh, the underlying assets. Mm -hmm. So that kind of connecting the dots between what you're trying to do 
how you're doing it and the sort of outcome at the end of it too, which is I think what investors want to see increasingly, right? Indeed. What's get what gets measured gets managed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Amazing. good phrase. Yeah. There we go. We'll use it. I'm sure you'll hear it plenty at, uh, at WPS. Well, John, we're really looking forward to welcoming you yeah. to The Hague, looking forward to your session on private credit alongside APG and MN on the Thursday the 7th. Um, and look forward to hearing more then. But thank you for your expert talk. Thank you very much, Sophie. See you in November. See you soon.